of the Elite Show. And uh, what was what were you going to tell us about, John? You- yeah, we'll, we'll talk about Sammy, but let's get into the NBA and, and some of the things we're not angels exactly. <laughs> and uh, we'll talk about Sammy towards the end of the show, and I'll I'll cover about uh, what he's taught, what he said about Cosa Nostra, and uh, he's Cosa Nostra to the end. So you know, I'll discuss that, uh, some personal issues with him, uh, the mafia, the Gambino family, and uh, my feeling of his betrayal. Uh, in his lifetime, not against, just not against me, but against the mafia, against his own family, against his brother-in-law, against a young boy that was murdered, and that we'll discuss uh, what uh, Cosa Nostra is to him exactly, his definition. Well, at least we got something out of you, right? Yeah, we'll get it later <laughs> on. We'll get a little bit, yeah. All right, so we'll do NBA in China. Now, what the hell is this? So now, all of a sudden, after 20 years, 30 years, however long it's been, now because of forced labor, as if they didn't know 30 years ago, now certain players are deciding not to work with China. Well, what I think is, you know, again, being a, a, mob, a gangster, a mob guy, a guy that killed, uh, I didn't have the right barometer of how to make money, obviously, for doing some of the things I did. But, you know, now that I look back in retrospect, it was the wrong way to live. But when you're watching the NBA and their behavior, uh, to the love of this country, like guys like Mark Cuban, they don't have seem to have any uh, moral bound on how they make their money, and the, you know he wouldn't denounce China on uh, on Fox News. So you know when I look at these guys and they're asking uh, Tucker Carlson asked him a question, he says I don't want to be political. You are being political because you're not speaking up for this country. But yet you're becoming very wealthy and rich off this country. But the problem is they won't speak against China because they make tons of money through China and with China. So they don't care uh, what's going on with the suppression and the genocide of people in their country. So you don't think they're doing this for any other reason than money or image or, I mean, it's not because they care, right? You you, you got movie actors who are ex-wrestlers like John Senna. He's a spineless. I got to tell you, I lost all kinds of respect for this. I guy. did too. He 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 got on live TV internationally and nationally, and he bellowed up like a bitch. You know you uh, you know begging forgiveness, and even said a couple of words in Chinese. I mean, what what people can respect him? What family members don't they say something to him? Where is their wives or their girlfriends or their sons or whoever in their family to say how dare you do that? I won't even go watch him again. Yeah, no, I won't watch him. And I, I was actually a big fan of him. So was I. That. So was I. He was. Uh, he played a part with um, Marky Wahlberg. Mark he, Wahlberg. Yeah. He was funny in it, yeah. and, and I got to tell you, I lost all respect for him. Uh, a lot of these athletes, uh, you know, they have it. They have an ability to reach a lot of people and kids, and 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 really show uh, a moral stand. And some of the good ones are Charles Barkley or Shaq. These guys are. Forget about they were super ball players. They're great human beings in every word of it. Not only do they talk uh, a good game, but they walk a good game. And uh, on on the court and off the court, you got to show a lot of respect for these guys because they're very boisterous in a positive way. And then you got guys like Enos Kentar who just came out and he spoke against China and what they're doing uh, to the to the, the Wiggins in 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 China, and what they're doing with genocide and. Nobody but him spoke up, and he spoke up with what they're doing to Taiwan and, and the freedoms. So you know, he, he, you know, it's not easy to be uh, a guy without a group. And the guys that do it, they're true leaders, heroes, whatever any word you want to use for them, when they're outspoken the way he was and denounced China, and he didn't care about his career. He actually was ready to throw his career away to speak up for justice and for what they're doing to uh, Muslims there and what they're doing to Taiwan and the freedoms. And he wears a sneaker that actually says that. So where are all the rest of the NBA and where is Mark Cuban and the rest of these guys that they're not saying anything for the love of this country and for the for the, for the the beings of, of people that are suffering in those countries? And as a street guy, a guy to do that, how much does that mean to you? I got to tell you, these, this shows you why there's very few leaders that uh, have the, uh, the ability to stand alone. And, you know, when you look at guys like LeBron James, 
I can't stand this guy. This guy, all he causes diversity, all he does is whine and cry like a baby. He's a billionaire. And yet, he, all he does is cause divide. He talks. You know, he's literally a billionaire. Oh, a billionaire! After well, that Nike contract, he's literally yeah. a billionaire. But he's okay with with, yeah. with racism and 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 slavery as long as he's making a buck from it. So this is the problem with these guys. They're 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 hypocritical. They're liars. They're weak. They don't take a stand. Terry Bradshaw is another guy I talk against, a uh, football player. Although I couldn't basketball. believe that. Terry Bradshaw, I couldn't believe So that. when these guys are jealous and they're talking against again a guy like Tom Brady, who took a stance with, with, with uh, uh, reports from his doctors and his personal being, where is Terry Bradshaw to talk against China? Where is Terry Bradshaw that he's not talking against the two million people that are walking in this country without vaccines? He doesn't open his mouth. He's another weak spokesman that picks and chooses how he wants to argue. Since you want to take that stand, why didn't you talk about the CDC, what I spoke about on the other show? Why didn't you talk about the two million people coming in unvaccinated? Why well, because that would be uncomfortable. All right. Well, because, again, this guy's sitting in his chair and he has the nerve, the audacity to talk against Tom Brady. You know, if you're going to speak, then speak. Don't speak on, on a limited basis. So since you open your big mouth, and you think you know something, why don't you go with the rest of the conversation? Where are you? To, you know, Because he can speak. Also, when Ennis Kentar was speaking against China, when he's speaking against what they're doing to the Muslims or to Taiwan, or actually they just threatened Australia. So where is he doing all these things? Since he wants to be outspoken, well, speak out. You're, a, you're another guy that's close to whatever he's got financially. I don't see him out there speaking for these inner city kids. I don't speak, see him, another guy who didn't take a stance with BLM. Take a stance. We all believe that black lives matter, but so does your life. So does an Indian life. So does Albanian life. And if you're going to speak and you want to talk out for BLM or anybody else, talk about all these poor kids that are dying. Talk about that they got to walk around with identifications now if they want to get something to eat or they're not allowed to eat food. Tell me that ain't China-like. You know, that's a great point because they're so worried about, you know, forced labor in China, but they're not worried about everything you mentioned in episode one. Everything you're saying now, they're not worried about that. You know, what I'm saying is the NBA is worried about buying shoes from China, right? Shouldn't the NBA be taking that time and money and effort and putting it into helping kids in the streets and all the issues that we have? No, they, I mean, don't, they don't care. It's only about greed and financial, you know, uh, upbringing for themselves. So as long as the league is making money, them as individuals are making money, they don't really care that Muslims are being slaved there. They don't care they're being genocide there. They don't care that the people are being suppressed and tortured and they have no food. Why would they care? So this is the problem. They don't care that all the vets lost their lives, family members, they lost limbs, they're suffering. You know, they do nothing to, to better the situation. And as long as they're, they're complicit with it, they're actually, so as long as they're complicit, they're actually helping them to hurt and, and kill people, suffer, and they, they're okay with it because as long as they get another endorsement. As mm -hmm. long as, you know, uh, LeBron can go to China and bring in another hundred million if that's what he wants to do, and he can be their bitch, he can be their little mouse, and, and do the talking for him just like, like I just said, Terry Bradshaw or any of these guys. But when Irving opened his mouth, and, and, and he took a stand because that's not easy to do when everybody else is going against you. And he stood out and said, no, I'm against, I, I'm, I'm not against vaccines. He said, if you want to take one, take one. And if you don't, that you shouldn't have to. And these people that keep chain, jam down someone's throat what they should do with their body. How about the father that was in agreement with getting it jammed down his throat and his 16-year-old son died? And he was just on the news about it. Where is everybody to say, wait a second, maybe this is wrong? That one, that one boy that died, one, that's only one out of, there was 17,000 incidents with, with, this, with this shot. Now, no one's sure if it was direct or not. Within three days, 5,500 people died. I says also 860,000 approximately went to, went to hospitals after taking the shot. And that's just the numbers that you're getting. These I'm, are I'm, numbers sure, I'm getting. sure they're much bigger than that. Of course, and, but the, the, the problem is, there's certain people taking a stand, like Anas Kantar, against the Chinese and what they've done. But the NBA has the ability to make a big statement if they really agreed with it, because originally they tried to shut him down, and that didn't work well for him, right? So then they apologized to him, and he went on, and, and you know he did some talks on the news, and he did some personal Instagram 
messages about it. And, you know, so for people that don't know who en Enos is, he's, uh, he was born in Switzerland, and he's Turkish, and uh, he's Muslim, or his family's Muslim, I believe. And so he came, and he was very outspoken about it. He's a gentleman. He's well-spoken. But he took a stand against uh, communism, against slavery. Now, with all that's going on, where's Newsom? See, when these guys want to pick these subjects and these topics, you know, Newsom, here's a, a time for you to, to be outspoken. Jump in and help. You know, stop letting everybody divide us because of financial gain. And when Terry Bradshaw had something to talk, I'm, I'm inviting him to go out and talk. I'm, I'm inviting LeBron James, who I really, really think is a coward. I says, he's one of the, I never seen a guy who become a billionaire in a country that denounces his country every which way. So if you're going to denounce this country, you know what? Go back and live in China or live somewhere else. Take your money and go. Get out. Kick him in his ass and get him out of this country. I says, but I want to see how it works out for him in China. But when you got guys like positive people like Shaq or, or Charles Arkham. Barkley, these guys are just really gentlemen, intelligent, uh, great messages. And unfortunately, the NBA has missed the mark for a lot of years because China's involved in bringing in all kinds of money from them. So they're sellouts for a dollar bill. So when I look back and I say, you know, I talk about my life and, and the barometer was way off gear, I'm not even close to what these guys are doing, how many lives the the people are suffering, dying, killed, and now the new threats with freedom, with Australia, they're trying to take over, they were threatening Australia, China made a big threat to Australia this week, and the threat to the United States if we get involved in the freedom of uh, Taiwan. And, and what they're trying to suppress Taiwan and take them back over. So, you know, China is actually instigating uh, taking over this world or threatening to take over Do this world. Do you think China will actually end up taking over Taiwan? Yeah. I don't think, oh. they, I don't think there's any fear for, for That's a big power. Uh, with, with us anymore. There is no fear. There is, we, haven't took a, we haven't took a stance anywhere. We let, uh, we, right about time. we let them do what they did, the Taliban do to us in Afghanistan. We lost... I believe it was 13 uh, 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 Marines in, in uh, Afghanistan, and nobody knelt down for him. You know, I go back to George Floyd because uh, Pelosi and Biden and the rest of them and Schumer and Schiff and all these people are kneeling down. And I'm an ex-gangster guy who was in jail, and by no means did I want to see George Floyd die the way he died. He, he shouldn't have died, without a doubt. But when you're making statues of George Floyd as a hero, that's something's wrong here. There's 13 uh, servicemen that died. Those are the statues you should be. Now, I'm not saying again, so I'm going to make this clear to anybody that tries to change my words. He should have never died. I was a street guy. I got beat up by certain bad police, but overall, I say the same thing. 99% of them are good. And when we change the, the truth, what happened to, because the government's trying uh, division, and division makes them stronger, the inability to take us over and the people that feed into it, the leaders, and, and you know, these leaders should be more outspoken. And the same thing, where's all the Muslim leaders to explain to the people in this country and around the world, it's not okay what they're doing to them in China. Where's the outcry? Why, why do they say one thing and then they stop? Or they don't say anything at all. Nothing's going to change if you just let it go. I says because every day when these people wake up in the morning, they're being abused. Re-education camps, they call it which is a nice way of saying concentration camps. Right. So, you know, why, why isn't the NBA speaking out? Why aren't they stopping the endorsements or anything to do with China? Why would they even have any games in China? Why are we going to any Olympic games or any other kind of games with, with China? We shouldn't be involved with China until with all the human atrocities that they've committed. Now, when they, they, they call it horrific human rights abuse, what, what exactly are they talking about? What, they overwork them? I mean, from your point of view. Well, yeah, well, they imprison them. They overwork them. They underpay them. They don't feed them. Uh, they separate them from families. Uh, they rape them. So it's not one thing. It's everything. They have, and you only live once for the people that know that. See, I ask you that because that's unbelievable. Because, like, if you Google it or you read it, it's just like, oh, they're overworked or they weren't fed. That's why I asked you to see what you'd say. Like, they're fucking raped? Does anybody, listen, Jeez. does anybody know what happened to the scientist that it, that was involved with uh, COVID originally? Disappeared. 
How, it's, it's okay with everybody? You really think this, this came from animals? This is Fauci, this is China. This is pure evil to another level. This is, uh, you know, the, the extinction of human beings if this continues with another uh, gain of function uh, experiment with other, which they're doing, by the way. This gain of function going over. So when you la allow guys like Fauci to be uh, involved in, in this country and China, what does everybody think? And there's nothing to say. CCP, if it's so good, as the Chinese that lived there and, and, and escaped and came here. Or, or anybody that's involved with that country. When you take the freedoms of somebody and tell them what they can eat, what time they can eat, what they can think, where is the rest of the outcries from all these leaders? Where Where is all the leaders to tell them, listen, you know, Muslim people, so very, people understand, aren't terrorists. There's a, there's, a, there's a small percentage of everybody that, you know, that in any organization or any religion or any, are extremists. In the Muslim religions, they're very peaceful. They're loving, and most countries uh, understand that. But when we allow that propaganda out of China for people to believe that nonsense, like we're not educated, like this isn't 2021 going on 2022. But people believe it, though. Because no one's fighting back. No one but Enos Kintar really said anything about this. Where's the rest of the NBA? Why aren't they speaking out? They'll tell you they're okay with him saying that now. But they don't make any, they have never made one. Enos State. Kintar was like a, that big of a line. Yeah, well, you know they, you know what they figured if we if we shut them down, it's going to make more, more news than not shutting them down. Right. So they want to keep it quiet. So they say, well, this ain't going to go nowhere with this, him speaking because no one's speaking out. The NBA has made a statement. Mark Cuban, who's another guy, he's all enjoying all the riches of this country, and he he has the audacity to go on Tucker Carlson and say, oh, I don't want to make a political statement. You just did by not making a statement Cuban is for America. Cuban's all over the place. One minute he's here, one minute he's there. Cuban's all over. Oh, he's, he's crazy. He's another guy. He's garbage, spoiled billionaire that doesn't. You imagine being in this country, making this kind of money, and you don't speak for this country, and you and you actually won't speak against a communist country that's that's torturing people, genociding people, and and reeducating them in concentration camps, and have the and this guy has the nerve not to make a statement. I think they're in a box with no oxygen. Yeah, I mean, listen, it, it goes back to the same thing internationally when people in in this country, I guess, you know, a lot of people don't travel out of the country. They don't understand other countries. They don't understand the, uh, you know, different... Like the heritage kind yeah, of... Yeah, the mindset, the cultures. You know, the problem is, you know, a lot of people don't have the ability, even if they wanted to go out of the country, finances and work and family situations. But the ones that do, we understand other cultures. And, you know, there's a big world out there. And when they allow uh, a culture like China that uh, abuses their citizens and and uh, and, and they're, they're on their mind is to take over the world. I mean, everybody knows what they, what, what they want at this point. And their technology is incredible. And we rely on them and everything. And the more things like the uh, climate accord, I mean, which is a joke because, joke. you know, Biden went there with a, a, a motorcade of 80-something cars yeah. and a climate exam. <laughs> they went there with, and then and then uh, these countries went with, I think it was 400 and something private jets, uh, a climate yeah. accord. Yeah. And they went there with, and when India private didn't Private jets up, burned how much fuel? India right? didn't show up. China <laughs> didn't show up. Uh, uh, Russia didn't show up. So... We wouldn't make a dent with all, all these countries if they're not involved. And since they started talking about climate accord, China is, is contributed six times or eight times even and more against climate control. So, you know, if you look at their their uh, input and output, I says it's incredible that people don't see this. And yet they put this big show on like something's going to change if the United States gets involved in climate. How is it going to change if these major countries... And the worst of all is China won't even show up. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp, H-E-L-P. Is there something interfering with your happiness or is it preventing you from achieving your goals? Listen, everybody, again, I'm a big advocate of therapy. BetterHelp, that's better. Help, H-E-L-P. We've had therapists on the show in the past. I talk about going to see therapists myself on a regular basis. I believe in it. And I hope that it'll help everyone that calls and looks for it. That's better help, H-E-L-P. Look for it, use it, have a better life, and smile. 
you can start communicating in under 48 hours. It's not a crisis line. It's not a self-help. It's a professional therapy done securely online. There's a broad range of expertise available, which may not be locally available in many areas. The service is available for clients worldwide. You can log into your account anytime and send a message to your therapist. You'll get timely and thoughtful responses. Plus, you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions, so you won't ever have to sit in an uncomfortable waiting room as with traditional therapy. Better help. Help is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches so they make it easy and free to change therapists if needed. It's more affordable than traditional offline therapy and financial aid is available. Better help, H-E-L-P, wants you to start living a happier life today. Visit their website, betterhelp.com, and read their testimonials that are posted daily. One of them, she is amazing and has helped me through some of the toughest moments of my life. I see my progress and growth because of her guidance. I am internally grateful to her. Another one, Dr. Egan is friendly, smart, intuitive. I'm glad he's my therapist, and I would 100% recommend him to anyone. Visit BetterHelp, H-E-L-P, help dot com slash mafia truths that's better help help h e l p dot com and join the over two million people that have taken charge of their mental health with the help and experience of a professional in fact so many people have been using better help h e l p that they are recruiting additional therapists in all fifty states special offer mention Mafia Truths with John Elite. Listeners get 10% off your first month of BetterHelp, H-E-L-P. Promo code Mafia Truths. Go get your help. So, you know, these are political games of ways of stealing money, maneuvering money, sending money. And, uh, you know, and, and they don't believe in it themselves. Well, you wouldn't go with 86 cars in a motorcade and 403, <laughs> you know, private jets, 405, whatever it is. I imagine this, you know, the gas that was wasted in in, in blowing And they the go gas. to a, a climate change summit, basically, in a bunch of fucking, you know, fossil fuel vehicles, you know? It's 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 really... A, now, do you think a lot of this has to do with Trump? Like, do you think this kind of all started with Trump? No, I think... I, I mean, I mean, not all, but I, where, where it got to this point where, like, the NBA is involved and the NFL... I think, I think that, you know, everybody's excuse is two things in government now. It's, you know, it's Trump or it's racism. You know, the two things they could try to divide. Forget Trump, because Trump has nothing to do with running this country anymore. So when they keep bringing up his name, it's just another way to d divide people. It is, has nothing to do with Trump or it has nothing to do with any anybody. It has to do with America against other countries like China that want to take over this country. They want to run it in a certain way with dictatorships. And we, we as a nation, is so weak that uh, we don't do anything about it. You don't have people in position that talk against it. it. It's very, you know, you need brave people like Enos Kintal. He was brave. You know, people say, why is he brave? Because he was just willing to give up his career. And, and you, if, if they stopped him, I don't think he would have stopped. He was taking a position. He, he drew a line in the sand that he was going to go after China for what they're doing to the Ty Taiwan Taiwan people and to their country with the threats against the uh, sovereignty of their nation. And then you have people like, again, um, you know, Terry Bradshaw or Mark Rubin. None of these guys say anything. You know why? Because it's easy not to say anything. It's easy for them to make comments against uh, Tom Brady. But, you know, why don't you sit in front of Tom Brady before you open your mouth and say something against the guy? Maybe a little jealous of him because he's the greatest probably quarterback ever, I think, in football I at this so. point. So, and this is a guy, Tom Brady, who actually I wasn't a big fan of his until the last couple of years. As a talent, I was I was always, uh, but as a person, I'm really got a lot of respect for him because he's made so many things. He's come out so many different ways for kids. He's really active. He's he's very verbal and and he's very positive. He does the right thing. So he always seems to be on the right side of an argument or, or, or the right stance against certain things. So I got a lot of new respect for him that I didn't have before. But 
These guys like Terry Bradshaw, you just want to bring in the money, but you you got a lot of you make a lot of little snide side comments, and you don't back it with anything. So I dare you to get in front of somebody like you know Kent Tar or Tom Brady and open your mouth and know your facts. Know that thirteen thousand scientists, like I said on the other show, and doctors, you know, talked against what you're saying. And no one's saying vaccine or no vaccine. But <clears throat> excuse me, nobody's telling him what to do with his personal life or his family. How would like Tom Brady knock on his door and tell him, "Well, I don't think you should have went there with your wife the other day or your kids." What kind of statement is this from this guy? Well, it's it's almost like <coughs> you take the NBA, you take the NFL, and that's just two, and then you look at the government, and it's it's all the same. It's all division, because you know half the NBA agrees with the other half doesn't. Same thing with football. I mean, what are they? The Redskins are now what the Washington team. I mean, listen. This is this is part of uh, Marxism. I never thought I'd see that in a million years. Well, these are all moves by extremists on one side. Marxism. Think about you know you, you're trying to teach children and and young adults certain things, and you sound like little. I mean, imagine this. Oh, they said a name about me. They said everybody's so touchy about little things. These are ridiculous things with the rest of the world. What's going on with the rest of the world? That even bringing this stuff up. If they have nothing better to do but to to do this. There's so many more things they can worry about. They can worry about, like I said, they can worry about jobs. They can worry about gas prices. They can worry about uh, inflation, food costs, because us average citizens and the people that are poor, all this takes effect on all of them. They're all suffering. They don't know where their next meal's coming. And then you got 85 cars going to a climate accord. I said, so forget about what side of the aisle anybody's on. It has nothing to do with it. It has to do with everyday people trying to survive. And, you know, so how do you survive when this stuff's going on? How do how do we allow, uh, you know, China as if, you know, they're good competitors? These are some of the dumb comments coming out of our government. They're not competitors. This ain't a baseball game. They're looking to take over the world. And their actions show it. I says it's not just them talking. They're doing it. Their technology is doing it. I says what they're doing to the people of China, what they're doing to Muslims, why is everybody okay with this? If Germany was doing this, if we can go back in time and what they did to the Jews, what's any different what they're doing? I said, so why isn't anybody making a big deal? You know what? People are so selfish, and it's only about money that they don't have anything to say to themselves. Well, I'm comfortable. LeBron is, I'm comfortable. I'm a billionaire. Of course I'm going to talk good for China. You got a big mouth with everything about racism and the young black kids and this and that are in the hood. If you cared about them, you'd donate tons of your billions of dollars. You would help them in education. And he's put some money. I've already said this. He has put some money, but not enough. And you wouldn't talk about the police because without the police, all those kids in those neighborhoods will end up getting killed because I was from those neighborhoods. There's enough crime there as it is if you don't have law enforcement to control it. And I'm not no advocate that I wanted to go to jail, but I was doing the wrong thing, so I went to prison. Let's stop blaming everybody. we got to take responsibility for our own actions. So I was a bad guy. I went to jail. The government are bad people. And unfortunately, there's a lot of good government workers, there's a lot of good FBI workers, there's a lot of good police, but overall, our government is corrupt. Our government is is needs a bath. It needs a good clean. Well, it seems like the higher it goes up, the more of a bath it needs. Well, it's not gonna change unless we keep talking about it and we don't let them get away with what they're doing. You know, and, and people gotta wake up and stop letting them cause division. They're causing division, the vaccinated against the unvaccinated, the blacks against the whites, the Spanish against the Indians, the blacks are beating up Chinese. This is all division and, and you know, no one's looking at the bigger picture. The bigger picture is when they try to push critical race theory and they say it doesn't exist. Well, if it doesn't, okay. it, it, or, or cancer culture when they're trying to, you know, these are Marxist ways, everybody knows it. So those same people who want the Marxist ways, I say it all the time. We'll give you a first class ticket. Tell us what country you want to go to. <laughs> you know, instead of letting everybody in, Biden, why don't you pay for them to get out? If they don't like the country, raise your hand well, and we'll I, give well, you, you know 10,000 a family. Why not? <laughs> you want to give 450,000 and blame it on the DOJ now. So now it ain't him. He's ordering the DOJ. He says, we don't have control of the DOJ. The DOJ is the one giving the money to the families that came here illegal. And you're going to pay them since they came here illegal and you're going to use some. You, crazy rhetoric that you're saying, but the families that are here already that are suffering, black families, Spanish families, Indian families, homeless people, 
veterans. Why ain't that four hundred fifty thousand going to them? No, it's going to the ones that they're letting in for free. Well, if you can't, if we can't take care of our own citizens. Why are you letting more That's... come in? And I feel bad from from other countries. Yeah, sure. But I feel bad for my cousins and family in, in Albania that are suffering and they don't have the money and they want to come here and they want to be with their family. But there's a legal way of doing things. If we did everything criminally, then we can go go back to some of the ways I used to do and I knock on somebody's door and take their money. <laughs> I mean, that's just not the way to live. That's the wrong way to live. Right. That's what I used to do and I paid for it. I went to jail. But a lot of our, our, our senators, congressmen, McConnell, who's a Republican, he's a sellout. He's a guy that he's another sellout to China. I was shocked and, by him. Uh, and, and, you know, these guys are, are very wealthy. You know, one of our poorest guys in 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 the government, and uh, they're all rich, is what I'm getting at. Um, they sell out this government for money. They sell out the freedoms for money. They sell out uh, the, the United States ways for money. And they're allowed to do it, and no one's checking them. No one's saying, why aren't they going to prison? Why aren't they being investigated? Who's going to investigate them themselves? I mean, so they're... Nothing goes anywhere because they control everything. They're controlling. They control the investigation and they control the outcome. And and the only way it's going well, to never stop. goes to an outcome because there's never an investigation. Yeah, and the only way it's going to stop if the people st stop it and the pe people need to stand up, get involved more, like they just did in Virginia. You know, it's a funny thing. Uh, Miss Sears yeah. just won. The, you know, as a, as a lieutenant uh, governor. In Virginia, right? She was a you know veteran. Her husband's a veteran. Why was Virginia such this huge, huge deal? Because they were pushing critical race theory there. They, they, they is that were what taking, it was about? Yeah, they I, I could not. I kept trying to watch. Well, Gardner went hell. after the parents as terrorists. He yeah. stepped in and tried to, you know, shut them down, intimidate them. You know, attorney. It's general. like so much shit. It's like you, you can't keep track of it. Well, the funny thing is, they kept bringing up racism, right? Yeah. Journalists. So you had a, a, a Spanish a victory in the uh, uh, prosecution, prosecution's office. You had the lieutenant governor, which uh, who I just said Sears was black, and then you had uh, the other guy win as governor. Uh, I forget his name off the top of my head. But, and he won as governor. So where is racism? You have white, Spanish, and black one. Uh, that's true. That's true America right there, right? So, you know, it's not based on your skin. It's based on what you're saying and what the people want. And people just want a normal life, whether you're Democrat, you're Republican, while you're independent, you just want to go back to America as we knew it. And there's nothing to do it. And, and the government themselves keep trying to push this division. And if we allow it, we're dummies because we're allowing what they want. They want to divide us all. And the only good thing that came out of this is you see when they try to fire the police and the firemen and the nurses and doctors. They all stuck together. Everybody stuck together. Yeah. Whether they were Trump followers, whether they were Black Lives Matter, whether I think people are starting to wake up a little more. I say it all the time. It takes something severe. Like 9-11, you'll see people stand together and, and stop talking about this nonsense racism because that's the government pushing that. Something major will happen, and then maybe slowly the division will come back to where we're all together again. But like you said, something major has to happen that brings people together. Not like COVID where you're locked in your house, I'm in locked in my house, you know what I mean? Well, major things are like now, you know, Russia's on the border of Ukraine. They're talking a thousand yeah. troops are there. And, you know, the United States is uh, helping Ukraine with some, you know, weapons and not enough. But the problem is when there is wars like this and if you keep allowing this in this direction and and people don't step up and you know maybe that's why they call it the media generation i don't know what they're waiting for i don't know what everybody's waiting for. can't they see what the direction of this country is going in and if china goes into taiwan then what what do we do you can't allow it because if you allow it it's just going to be the next country after and maybe it's australia next with china so you know you have to stop it now and people need to take a stand and, and the only way you're going to take a stand is we shouldn't be doing business with them we shouldn't be in the olympics with them we shouldn't, we shouldn't be, they, they actually dictate to us what can be in Hollywood films and these dummies in Hollywood. And there's some good ones there. John Voight's a good one. Uh, James Wood's a good one. Yeah. Uh, McConnell's a good one. Uh, McConnell is a good one. You know, there's some that speak up for this country. And, and that's what we need. We can't allow China to dictate their image in Hollywood movies. You imagine they're telling us what we can, so they want more propaganda. Just like our journalists. I don't care what side of the aisle you're on. You know, Show some real journalistic integrity and and just just send out the news. Let people judge for themselves, but they don't do it. So this is the problem, and, and, and I think 
with all this propaganda and the power China has, uh, and you know, implementing what they want the message to be, this country's okay with it. Just let it go. So when you have good, you know, some strong people in sports that speak up and speak out, I think that's what you need. You need some people that have voices to come, and I think the. The, the Muslim leaders need to get more boisterous and come out and speak against China. How do you think the NBA comes back from this, though? I don't watch. I mean, it, it, I'm hoping there's people like me that uh, boycott basketball. Uh, I, I don't watch it. I used to watch it all the time. Uh, I don't watch it. I, I, w I would never watch it for what they do. And, you know, they're trying to shut down and intimidate. And like I said, the only reason why they didn't go after Qatar, I think they had uh, a meeting indoors with themselves, the, you know, the, the, the association, the basketball league and said let's not go after him it'll bring more news so i think you know slowly since he talked i talked maybe somebody else will talk and we keep talking i just because you can't allow this to continue and you can't allow weak men like lebron become a billionaire and 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 he's their spokesman because that's what he is because he, he sends his money out or john center or any of these weak individuals and they're all getting paid on the kick yeah, well they right? all yeah that's why they're there the terry bradshaw all these guys are just weak and when they when they stand up to uh, somebody who's a strong individual, listen, strong individuals, Tom Brady, he did what's not popular. Strong individuals, Enos Kentuck, because he did what's not popular. A strong individual is uh, Irving from the Nets, because he, he also, he stood and did what's not popular. When you do something that's not popular and you don't have a group, you're a strong individual, you're sending the right message. Whether you agree with what he's doing or not, you know he's a leader, you know he's strong. Now the conversation is, is he right or wrong? So when Terry Bradshaw opened his mouth, we'll go off back to, to the mandates. When you open your mouth, why don't you say something about the two million people coming in this country that are not vaccinated, that they're being sent all over the world? So if it's really that much of a pandemic, why is the government doing that? I love Ask how they tell half the Well, he's story. a dummy, Terry Bradshaw. Yeah, he, he's yeah. a, I mean, he's really an imbecile. He doesn't have no education. I thought it was funny. Uh, so, funny on the weekend sometimes I, he, when he was he, announcing. Listen, he has a, a, a dry, dumb sense of humor. Yeah. But he makes a clown of himself. Yeah. But he just made a clown of himself again without trying to. Yeah. So. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, I think that there's there's ways to do it. But the, the biggest thing you said is the division. And th the problem is is that there's so much money involved and so much power involved. I don't. I don't know if it ever comes back because the, what I what concerns me is when the next election comes up. How many people are not going to vote? And the next election could change everything. Well, I think people now are starting to come out because it's not really anymore about the candidate himself. I think it's for, you know, what people are looking for is to go back to the, the, the table politics, meaning, you know, they don't want people telling you how to raise their kids. They want to tell, you know, they, they want to go to the gas pumps and be able to, you know, feed their family. They don't want uh, soaring uh, prices. Yeah, here's something I, I, I was going to say earlier. You, they don't want an infrastructure plan for a, a trillion something dollars when there's not infrastructure. They, it's only 6% infrastructure. So everything the government does, they're, you know, they're just full of shit. They hide it with other things. So 6% is actually going for infrastructure. And then even with the infrastructure, you have, you know, the transportation secretary that's talking about, well, it was a racist infrastructure. No, it wasn't. When they're talking about New York, you know, everything they bring in has got to be racist, right? So when they brought it in, it was financial. It wasn't racist because back in those days when, there was, when a lot of these highways and roads were built in New York that he's claiming, there was only 4% black community there. So it wasn't done out of racist. It was done out of communities with no money, like my community. So when they say that back in those days, it wasn't possible because it didn't have that kind of population. So they, they use everything to try to divide people and think everybody's dumb. But this was done years ago. So, you know, when so, but still, the money that they're talking about isn't for infrastructure. It's for everything but infrastructure. So, you know, you want to put 90-something percent for infrastructure and 4 percent? Okay. But they're doing the opposite. They're sending 6 percent. And really, out of that 6 percent, or even if it goes as high as 10 percent, say, how much of that's really going there? How much is over cost? How much are they stealing? So when they could talk about Trump all they want, if you like him and don't like him. But, you know, the, the message he gave was very simple on pro-America. So, you know, maybe people didn't like him. They were independent. Some did, didn't. So it doesn't have to be Trump. It's just got to be somebody saying, hey, we got to come first as a country, as a nation. You know, our, our firemen, our police officers, our nurses, our doctors, our truck drivers, uh, they need to come first. But when you have 
containers sitting in California. And it takes, I think it's a 17-day or 20-day layover to get our to get our containers in. And you have rich people that are saying, like Biden and these people that in government, oh, that's okay. Because they're not an average family. You don't know what it is. When a father works all week and his, his kid needs a new pair of sneakers to go to school and he can't afford them, and now containers are sitting on the docks in, in, the, in the ocean or on the docks and prices are rising everywhere and they, they, they worry about if can they afford giving meals to their kids tomorrow for breakfast. And, you know, so these politicians like McConnell, who's a sellout, and he, he says one thing, he does another. We're sick of it. People are sick of it. So when they look at China and they see what China's doing to the United States, they're taking advantage of them. You need a strong leader. Whether that's another Bill Clinton on the Democratic side, just another new name, but he's a you know he's a leader that people respect. It's almost like he got good policy, good morals, and and it's not just the cost; it's if they even have anything in stock. So even if you have the money to afford something, stock's going out like crazy. We, we, we're, yeah. back, we're still depending on China for everything. Even now, yeah. they're talking about you know they're talking about electric cars you know where half this stuff is going to be built in china you imagine of course that? It is. so now you're trying to you're trying to implement something that's not ready to be implemented first off to cut off the oil and gas lines but since you're trying to do that you you're making us more reliable on china again you just begged opec to to, to release more oil and gas to us. is that in, is that incredible that you're begging uh, uh, a cartel because <laughs> that's what they are another mob and they're telling you no sorry we're not doing it. So, you know, th this this uh, this government is just up and down. It's corrupt. needs to be cleaned out. Cleaned out. It's crazy. Yeah. So i like to hear more from everybody on China, honestly. I hope people start to speak out yeah. and don't let this go. And, and really, I hope people start to boycott basketball until they wake up and... Uh, uh, yeah, it's bullshit. It's they, ridiculous. You, you know, really should watch it. With all the Muslims in this country and around the world... Uh, they definitely hurt uh, basketball ratings and 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 their finances if they. I don't I don't know that the NBA can ever come back to what it was. I hope they never do. I just, I, they, I don't they, think they can. You know the ball players that don't stand up because they have the ability to stand up. They should all wear in the sneakers of freedom for Taiwan the way uh, oh, Kentar is, and I hope they do. But they need to make a statement. I mean, this is uh, what they, what they're allowing. Is the destruction of humanity, and nobody's doing nothing about it. So, they can never I talk about the mafia as long as this is going on within our government and within our, within our pro athletes. Yeah, well, I don't think they can ever come back. So, yeah. until the next one, the next oh, I the, forgot the elite to, show. Actually, I forgot. Yep, you forgot Nanny. Sammy Govano yep. again. He's not that important to me <laughs> or, or to the country. Uh, so we'll, we'll talk about him on the next one. We'll get to him. The next one's a surprise.